Hey everybody, so last night I saw Men in Black International, directed by F. Gary Gray, starring Chris Hemsworth, Tessa Thompson, Kumail Nanjiani, Emma Thompson, and Liam Neeson. Uh, here's another bad Men in Black sequel, simply put. Uh, now let me preface this by saying that the original Men in Black is one of my favorite movies of all time. The story is well put together, the on-screen chemistry of Smith and Jones is great, it's funny and directed extremely well. Men in Black International is the polar opposite of all of these things. Tessa Thompson and Chris Hemsworth somehow lose all on-screen chemistry they had in Thor Ragnarok and left me utterly bored. Uh, Thompson's character is all over the place and Hemsworth feels like he has little to no character arc throughout the entire movie. To me, the story is extremely weak. It bounces from place to place with force feeding down audiences throats, bad CGI, and horrible storytelling. The story itself is just horrendously predictable, and the script is garbage. A lot of lines feel 80 yard, and I think I laughed once throughout the entire film, which is really a detriment to it. What comedy there is in the film falls hard on its face. And that being said, there's a ton of comedy in this movie. And there were a few times I heard other people in the theater laughing, maybe once or twice, but it felt very forced by the movie. It was like, oh, we're going to keep doing this bit over and over and over for the next minute or two, and then it gets people to laugh. That's the kind of comedy that's in this movie, and that's what got people laughing. Speaking of which, though, Kumail Nanjiani, who I normally like, is a straight-up annoying character playing the comedic relief. That I didn't want to see on screen. Thankfully, the story forgot to put him into it. He only appears in the story or in the script when he needs to make a joke or be a deus ex machina. Every joke he makes is groan-inducing. In the end, I knew based off the trailers that Men in Black International would be a joyless cash grab at trying to revive a dying franchise. Speaking of which, International references Men in Black 1 by pa through a painting of how J and K saved the universe, but plainly ignores Men in Black 2 and 3, even though J and K saved the planet in both of those. Plus, it acts as if Neeson's character is the most decorated agent in MIB history when Agent K exists. Simply put, MIB International is a joyless ride that left me questioning my existence. 4.7 out of 10.